In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It was several years ago when I was the executive director of the BFW National Home that we belonged to a fellowship of child care directors throughout the nation. And I was sent to Dallas for their conference. At the banquet, they had a group of young children who came and entertained us. And the children sang this song, He's Still Working On Me. I don't know if you're familiar, but it stuck with me. And the words are, think, imagine little kids singing this. He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth, and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, because he's still working on me. <laughs> and it goes on to say, there really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge him yet, there's an unfinished part. But I'll be better, just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hand. And again, you sing, he's still working on me. And then it sings, in the mirror of his word, reflection that I see, makes me wonder why he never gave up on me. But he loves me as I am and helps me when I pray. Remember, he's the potter and I'm the clay, and he's still working on me. And so I remember those children singing that song, and it, and I've never forgot it, especially when I worked with delinquents for many years, that God still works on children. And then when I went to find the words of the song, it was sung by a group in a church by the, woman, the man who wrote the song, Joel Hempel. Now, Joel actually wrote many, in his life, many songs. Um, he was inducted in the Gospel Hall of Fame and he, Gospel Music Hall, but he, when he was singing it, he was singing those verses, someone during that narrated that Joel actually was, had recovered from colon cancer. And because of the colon cancer, he went through a long period of clinical depression. And he said it was the confidence in the faithfulness of God that pulled him through all of this. And he's saying, and he's still working on me. And so what we remember in this gospel, in the epistle, and in the readings today, is that God is there with us all the time, even through the rough times, even through the hard times. And then Jesus says, not only is God with us, but if you truly want to be my disciple, there's more to it. It's not enough just to sit in church on Sunday. It's not enough to just say a prayer. You have to live the gospel. You have to live out my words. And that takes sacrifice. It may mean that you may hate your mother and father. And hate is a strong word. But what Jesus was saying is, God has to come above all else. And in this day and age, there is enough stuff going on, enough evil around us, that it may make us cause to be in alignment with God rather than in alignment with our fellow people that we hang out with. Just yesterday, as I was reading in Facebook, there is a church in Bloomfield Hills, a Baptist church, that because this week they're celebrating September 11th, he's doing an anti-Muslim rally at the Baptist church. How is that God's message? How is that what Jesus taught us to love and forgive? To do that rather than to embrace and care for and take care of. Evil prevails. And that may mean that we have to align ourselves with the gospel, not 
somebody's interpretation of the gospel, but what are the words that Jesus said? It's hard work to be a Christian, a true Christian, not just in name only. It's hard work to be a disciple. John Calvin says if you want to be a there's four things you need to do to be a disciple of Christ. You have to have self-denial. In other words, you come last, not first. Whether that means that you need to have the last word in an argument, whether that means that person that's hungry, you, keep, you stay at the banquet while others starve, whether it means that when you know something isn't right, that you keep your mouth shut, because you don't want people to go after you or to condemn you. It's hard work to have self-denial. It's really hard, because sometimes it's easy just to keep our mouth shut and to just live our day-to-day -day without any waves. Calvin, John Calvin also says that we must be a cross-bearer. Jesus fell from the weight of a cross. It may mean that we may fall, that what we're asked to carry must be, may be hard and heavy. It may weigh heavy on our heart when we hear people doing things that, that we know are wrong and aren't just, and that we have to carry the weight, and we have to be the body of Christ. We have to lift up that cross and help carry it. Calvin also says that we should meditate on eternal life. That if we're so focused on today and what we need and what we want and what makes us happy, that we're not looking into where God wants us to look, which is into the eternal life. And it's not that we do everything because we know that if we don't, we're not going to get to heaven. I spent a lot of my years living out of fear because I didn't want to go to hell rather than living because I loved God so much I wanted to please God. So it's not about living out of a fear base because we're afraid of the consequences, but living out of a place of love and care that we can't imagine ourselves not joining Christ in the afterlife. I can't imagine what it would be like not living with the people who love God so much, the people that I've gotten to know here and at other churches who I love so very much because they love God and we can love so much. It's such a fullness rather than an emptiness in our life. And then Calvin adds one little piece left that we must have proper use of the gifts of God in our daily life. That the gifts that each one of us are given, whether it's the, verse, the gift of voice, whether it's the gift of, of caring for those, whether your family or those who can't care for themselves, whether it's taking time to work in a thrift shop, whether it's time in the food pantry or serving food to others, whether it's a gift of money to help for us to have a place that we can worship together, to come and get fed so we can go out and feed others. Whatever gifts and talents we've been given, we're asked to use them. That's what discipleship is all about. It's not just showing up, but it's being present, to truly be present to each other and to those in the world that need us the most. We forget that we are the light of Christ in the world. We are the ones that may never enter a church door, but through us they can feel God's presence in their life. Bonhoeffer says, the call to discipleship is a gift of grace, and that call is inseparable from grace. It's about grace. It's about grace to be able to do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. Pope John Paul II 
wrote, Dear friends, to believe in Jesus today demands of us, just as it did in the past, that we take a stand for him, almost to the point at times of new martyrdom. The martyrdom of those today as yesterday are called to go against the tide in order to follow the divine master, to follow the lamb wherever he goes. That's what we're called to do. And in the, God, in the Old Testament reading, we learned that God doesn't give up on us. We're the clay. He's the potter. And he can continue to mold us and guide us through the words and the teachings of Jesus. We are not alone in this. We are joined with each other to support each other in this hard work of being a disciple of Christ. And don't get discouraged because like the song said, he's still working on us. And he gives us a chance to get it right. And if we fall, he'll give us another chance. Until we know when we meet him, we'll say, God, I did what you asked. I followed the teachings of Jesus. Just please make room for me. And with that, life is good. And life is a promise. It's a promise of eternal life. So know how weary you get. Know that you're not doing this alone. And he's still working on us. Amen.